Hello students. Today we are going to discuss polarization. Interference and diffraction explained light is a wave. But it doesn't show what type of wave is light. The polarization explains light is a transverse wave. We will see how the polarization explains the nature of of the light wave we will discuss polarization in detail this is the unpolarized light see here this is unpolarized light it is propagating along the x direction that means uh, the vibrations are in the xy plane and the xz plane vibrations in the xy plane so this is the xy vibrations and the vibrations in the xz plane that means this one see the xy plane and the xz plane both are perpendicular to x direction x direction is the direction of propagation of the wave so unpolarized light the electric vector it is in the xy plane and in the xz plane when it is passed through a polarizer special type of crystal then what happened see the vibrations is restricted in a single plane here in this polarizer the molecules are aligned in the xz plane when the molecules are aligned in the xz plane that means uh, the xz vibrations get absorbed and uh, xy plane vibrations are transmitted so here the pass axis that is in the xy plane pass axis is in the xy plane and here the vibrations are restricted in the xy plane so the here the light is polarized the phenomena of restricting the vibration of a light vector in a particular direction in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light that is polarization see here unpolarized light vibration in the xy plane and xz plane but here the pass axis is xy plane so the vibrations are in the xy plane suppose here the pass axis is in the xz plane then the vibrations in the xz xz plane will be here and xy plane will be absent the equation of the transverse wave propagating along the x direction and its vibrations are in the xy plane then the displacement y is equal to a sin kx minus omega t here k is the wave number that is the propagation constant k is equal to 2 pi by lambda omega is the angular frequency that is 2 pi nu the same way the equation of the wave propagating through x direction and the vibrations are in the x z plane then the equation is z is equal to a sin kx minus omega t these things we will see in detail here see this is the unpolarized light see this vibrations this vibrations it represents the unpolarized light unpolarized light see this is also representing unpolarized light the arrows parallel to the plane that we consider as the vibration in the xy plane and this dot that is perpendicular to the plane that means vibrations perpendicular to the plane that is this dots and arrows represents the vibrations parallel to the plane here this is the pass axis of this crystal qp is the pass axis of this crystal then the molecules are aligned in the xz plane 
so what happened the vibrations in the x z plane get absorbed here and vibrations in the x y plane is transmitted so the light after passing through this crystal its vibrations are restricted in a single plane suppose here the pass axis is in this direction pass axis is in this direction along the x z direction then what happen if the pass axis is along the z z direction then the vibrations in the x z plane will be transmitted and the vibrations in the x y plane get absorbed so then the whatever the light coming from the tourmaline crystal that is the polaroid that will be this way this dotted and when the pass axis is along the y axis then what happen the vibrations are parallel to the plane of the paper so this is polarized polarization so this tourmaline crystal it, it acts like a polaroid and it polarizes the unpolarized light see here vibrations perpendicular to the plane of the paper it shows dots and vibration parallel to the plane of the paper arrows parallel to the plane of the paper after passing through the polaroid the vibrations are restricted in a single plane so the vibrations are either in the xy plane or xz plane that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation this type of light is called plane polarized light the light after passing through the polaroid the vibrations are restricted in a single plane that is plane polarized light see here this is y axis is the pass axis that means vibrations are in the xy plane so plane of vibration is in the xy plane and plane of polarization is xz plane if the pass axis is along the z axis then the plane of vibrations in the xz plane and plane of polarization will be in the xy plane so plane of polarization and plane of vibrations are perpendicular to each other we have seen that when unpolarized light is passing through a polaroid the emergent light is polarized that we have seen that then if we analyze this light with another polaroid so we can rotate the second polaroid relative to the first polaroid if these two polaroids are parallel then we will get a maximum intensity here but if these two are crossed that time the intensity is zero so this gives the malus law what is malus law when a beam of plane polarized light is incident on an analyzer the intensity i of light transmitted from the analyzer varies directly as the square of the cosine of the angle theta between the planes of the transmission of analyzer and polarizer so this is the polaroid and this is the analyzer it depends upon the angle between the pass axis of analyzer and the polarizer so i is equal to i0 cos square theta see here i0 is the incident light after passing through the first polaroid its intensity halved that is i0 by 2 then the intensity of the light emerging from the analyzer i depends upon the angle between the pass axis of polaroid and the analyzer so it's given here that to really see here that is i is equal to i0 by 2 cos square theta see the graph here this graph shows shows 
the when we rotate the analyzer what happened to the intensity the variation of intensity with angle between the pass axis of the polaroid and the analyzer shows that the light is a transverse wave when these two are parallel that time only we are getting the intensity here when these two are crossed the intensity is minimum we can see that we can polarize uh, light wave but we cannot polarize sound waves why because sound wave is a longitudinal wave now what are the uses of polaroids polaroids are used to produce plain polarized light polaroids are widely used as polarizing sunglasses polaroids are used as glass windows in trains and aeroplanes to control the intensity of light polaroids are used to view 3d pictures see here 3d pictures you can see that one uh, eye it is uh, polarized in one plane other it is polarized in the other plane so the combination we will get the 3d effect it is used in lcd tv liquid crystal display liquid crystal display also polaroids are using next we have to discuss what are the different methods to polarize light polarization by reflection and polarization by scattering now in detail we will see what is polarization by scattering next we have to discuss polarization by scattering here the unpolarized light it is propagating along the x direction that means uh, the vibrations are in the x y plane and in the x z plane electric vector is along the x y plane and x z plane an observer is observing along the y direction he will receive the vibrations perpendicular to him that means uh, he can receive vibrations in the x z plane so whatever the vibrations he is observing that is plane polarized light why because its vibrations are restricted in a single plane so by using by method of scattering also we can polarize light next is polarization by reflection and brewster's law here the unpolarized light is incident on the interface of two media that is a and b then light undergoes refraction but part of the light it undergoes reflection also at a particular angle of incidence that is theta p that is the polarizing angle the reflected light is completely polarized at this angle of incidence the reflected light and the refracted light are perpendicular to each other so this angle theta p is called a polarizing angle so these two are perpendicular to each other that means uh, here angle of incidence that is equal to angle of reflection that is theta p plus r that is theta p plus r theta p and then r equal to 90 degree theta p plus r equal to 90 degree that is r is equal to 90 minus theta p refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium is equal to sin theta p upon sin r that is sin theta p upon sin 90 minus theta p that is mu b is equal to tan theta p refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium is equal to the tangent of the polarizing angle 
This is Bruce Doe's law. Question can come in a different way also. That is, show that at polarizing angle, the reflected ray and the refracted ray are perpendicular to each other. How we will show this? We can show it very easily. How? See here. You know the Brewster's law. That is, refractive index is equal to tan IP. Then you know Snell's law also. Snell's law mu is equal to sin IP upon sin R. Now, the refractive index is same. So, left side is same. So, we can equate tan IP and this one. That means we can equate Brewster's law and Snell's law. When we equate these two, we will get sin R is equal to cos IP. Sin R is equal to sin 90 minus IP. Cos IP is 90 minus IP. Then R is equal to 90 minus IP. R plus IP is equal to 90. Thus, the angle of refraction and angle of polarization is complementary to each other. The refracted ray and the refracted ray are perpendicular to each other.